Good evening, my name is Chinemerem Joseph and I welcome you to today's edition of You and the Economy. One of the standout events on the calendar of Nigeria's vibrant financial sector is the annual dinner of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN. The event, which usually takes place at the tail end of each year, is traditionally regarded as the Day of the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. Now, this is because the occasion affords stakeholders the privilege of interacting and listening to the CBN governor as he examines critical issues and fundamentals that have affected the banking industry in the year about to end. The forum also serves as a veritable platform for the CBN governor to share his perspective on economic and financial market developments over the past year and to also provide an outlook on the economy for the year ahead. Awards are also presented at the event to those actors in the financial sector who distinguished themselves in the expiring year. You and the Economy covered the 2021 edition of the CIBN Annual Bankers Dinner, which took place in Lagos the former federal capital recently, and today's edition of the program dwells on the highlights of the event. For an event with the theme, a night to celebrate, recognize, impact, and inspire. The 56th Annual Bankers Dinner of the Chartered Institute of Bankers, CIBN, surely lived up to its billing in all aspects. Stakeholders in the banking industry and key economic actors, inclusive of regulators, operators, top government functionaries, political actors, bank customers, as well as members of the diplomatic community, converged on the Balmoral Convention Center of the Federal Palace Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos, to celebrate in a jolly and convivial atmosphere. The air was redolent with a scent of celebration in a setting dazzling with glittering colors, beauty, and panache. It was, to say the least, a colorful evening full of glitz and glamour. The night was literally filled with laughter as bankers, traditionally known to be reserved and conservative, let down their airs to relax, network, and have fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In his goodwill remark, Babaji de Sonolu, Governor of Lagos State, commended the leadership of the CIBN, past and present, for making the annual event a highly anticipated one year after year, not only among its members, but also for major stakeholders in the Nigerian economy. Sonolu, who himself is a one-time active banker, revealed the COVID-19 pandemic, its impact on the nation, and the concerted efforts made to tackle its adverse consequences. He praised the banking industry for the deft manner in which it rose to the challenges of tackling the dire economic impact of the pandemic on lives, livelihoods, as well as on the nation in general. The Legal State Governor noted that despite the fact that the banking industry was itself affected by the pandemic too, it still led the way in providing support to aid Nigeria's recovery from the adverse impact of COVID-19 and thanks the industry for its patriotism and support. 
Sawolu urged stakeholders to not relent in brainstorming on how to reduce the cost of credits granted to ameliorate the impact of COVID and its attendant burden to beneficiaries. Data from the Central Bank of Nigeria shows that this year we have seen record levels of banking credit extended to the private sector. The Central Bank, under the very dogged leadership of the Governor, Mr. Godwin and Ms. Day, has left no stone unturned in its determination to ensure that higher levels of credit are made available to support small, medium, and large businesses in the country. I stand here as a major beneficiary of what the country spirit of the Nigerian banking has shown us. I was just explaining to the Central Bank Governor that even at the very recent G20 meeting that was held in Rome, I was prepared to be at the side meeting and the question was asked, how did we do it in Nigeria? And I said to them that there were the lessons and the support that came from the organized private sector that was led by Mr. Governor of CBN himself. And I stand here on behalf of my other colleagues, governors, and everyone in the public sector to thank all of you for your generous contribution, for believing in the strength of we coming together and for ensuring that indeed we all can work collaboratively and put this pandemic behind us. I think we all deserve a round of applause because at this critical time, we are not talking about profitability, we are talking about how we save life and how we do back better for each and every one of us. Earlier in a welcome address, the President Chairman of Council, Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, Dr. Bayo Ulubemi, expressed appreciation to the CBN Governor, Godwin Emefili, for being steadfast in his support to the Institute in the realization of its statutory mandates. Dr. Ulubemi commended the Ad Hoc Committee on the 2021 Annual Bankers' Dinner for organizing a robust and successful dinner. The CIPN president recognized the new initiatives introduced by the committee to make the event live up to its billing as a night to celebrate, recognize, impact and inspire. One of such initiatives, he said, was the award for unsung COVID-19 heroes in the banking industry, an award category specifically designed to honor deserving individuals that stepped up beyond the call of duty in the fight against COVID-19 and who ensured business continued in their various places of work at considerable risks to their health and lives. The CIBN president, whose tenure of office shall end in May 2022, thanks stakeholders for the support given to his team since he assumed office as president slash chairman of the governing council of the institute, especially in the implementation of the legacy project of his tenure. Since taking on the mantle of leadership of our revived institute in May 2020, we have continued to build on the solid foundation laid by our predecessors, rooted in the tradition of constantly leaning forward into the future. We have explored new and uncharted territories, expanding the frontiers of our institute in our avowed resolve to build a future, a future forward institute. Suffice to say that this is my last dinner as the president and chairman of council of the institute as I will be handing over the mantle of leadership in May 2022. I therefore like to thank you all for your support in the implementation of the eight team agenda of my administration. I want to assure you that the Institute will continue to devote its resources to the development of competencies while strengthening observance of ethics and professionalism in the banking industry. The Chairman, Body of Banks Chief Executive Officers, Herbert Wigwe, who is the Group Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer of Access Bank PLC, also spoke at the event. Mwigwe appreciated the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Amefeli, and his team for the dynamic initiatives introduced by the CBN in the aftermath of the outbreak of COVID-19, which he said helped stabilize the Nigerian economy. According to Mwigwe, the initiatives of the CBN spurred the modest growth in the country's gross domestic product, GDP, especially at a period when 
Other economies around the world were virtually brought to their knees. Wigwe commended the CBN governor for being laser-focused in his dogged determination to ensure that things only got better for the Nigerian economy. While other economies around the world were being brought down to their knees by the pandemic, one man and his team were busy implementing initiatives and interventions in different sectors that have helped to buoy up the Nigerian economy. The Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emefile. <laughs> Mr. Emefile is just laser focused on trying to make sure that things get, up, get better for all of us. Governor, the initiatives that you and your team introduced have helped to stabilize the economy and bring about modest growth in GDP of about 5% and 4% in QT and P3. May I invite all of us to give our governor a much-deserved standing ovation. Thank you. The address of the chairman of Body of Bank CEOs also dwells on the roles of the banking industry in supporting and developing the nation. He said the dinner provided an auspicious platform for bankers to reflect on some of the great things they had done for the country in the past 20 months, a period he described as being particularly difficult for Nigeria. The Access Bank GMD slash CEO reflected on the outbreak of COVID-19 and the challenges it threw up in Nigeria and commended the roles played by the banking industry to assist the federal government in tackling the virus and its debilitating impacts on the nation. Wigwe noted in particular the swift response of the banking industry in combating COVID-19 and cushioning the impact of the lockdowns it necessitated on more than 10 million vulnerable Nigerians by driving the establishment of the Coalition Against COVID-19, CACOVID, a private sector-led task force set up in partnership with the federal government, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, and the World Health Organization, WHO, with the sole aim of tackling coronavirus in Nigeria. While urging the banking industry to be proud of the way it supported the nation at the peak of the COVID-19 outbreak, the chairman, Body of Bank CEOs, noted that there was nothing more honorable than to stand up to be counted in support of one's country. He thanked stakeholders in the industry who contributed financially and technically to spur Nigeria's economy back to life. In line with tradition, the keynote address at the event was delivered by the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefeli. The address, which zeroed in on the need for Nigeria to be less reliant on other nations, highlighted the views of the CBN Governor on developments in the Nigerian economy, a prognosis on the future outlook, as well as the steps being taken by the CBN to support improved economic activity. After a detailed and thorough preamble that analyzed the state of the Nigerian economy before, during, and in the period that is now dovetailing into what can be regarded as the post-COVID-19 era, Governor Emefili spoke on the current state of the economy. The CBN governor noted that growth had returned to the pre-COVID levels due to what he described as the accommodative policy support provided by the monetary and fiscal authorities. According to Emefili, prospects of a broad-based economic recovery in Nigeria now remained bright. He, however, sued for caution, noting that Nigeria's economic growth still remained fragile. Continued implementation of our intervention efforts would need to be undertaken to sustain the recovery efforts and stimulate further growth of the economy. Third, Given the population growth rate of about 2.7% annually, it is important that we continue to deploy measures that will enable our economy to attain annual growth rate of above 5%. As a result, all efforts in 2022, we dare say, must be geared to ensure that we maintain our focus on improving access to finance and credit for households and businesses mobilizing investment to boost domestic productivity, enabling faster growth of non-oil exports, and supporting employment generation generating activities. 
On the outlook for the future, the CBN governor enumerated the areas of policy focus for the year 2022. The segment of his presentation that practically all attendees at the event, as well as the millions of viewers following the event live on television, had looked forward to hearing most eagerly. According to MFLE, the core areas of focus shall include the following. The 100 for 100 policy on production and productivity to catalyze growth in the critical sectors of the economy, while aiding Nigeria's efforts to create employment opportunities and reduce dependence on imported goods. Supporting the growth of the digital economy through a more aggressive deployment of the e-NARA, Nigeria and Africa's first central bank digital currency, CBDC, and the deepening of financial inclusion by improving access to finance for individuals and businesses through digital channels, lowering the cost of transactions and increasing the flow of credit to households and businesses. Other areas of focus mentioned by the CBN Governor are the establishment of Nigeria's Infrastructure Finance Corporation in recognition of the role that improved infrastructure could play in driving a more rapid development of the economy and the setting up of an international financial centre at the Eco-Atlantic City in Victoria Island, Lagos to serve as hub for attracting domestic and external capacity needed to strengthen the Nigerian economy in the post-COVID era. The CBN Governor explains some of these areas of focus further. Under this program, targeted credit of up to 5 billion naira will be provided to 100 firms every 100 days, provided that these firms are investing in projects that are greenfield projects. Second, projects should be assessed on their ability to generate significant employment opportunities in critical sectors of our economy. Third, eligible firms must show evidence of their efforts to harness available local raw materials towards the realization of their intended investments. Efforts will also be made to support firms that are geared towards producing goods for the export market. A key focus of the CBN under our leadership has been the enabling of build-out of robust payment system infrastructure in Nigeria that will provide cheap, efficient, and faster means of conducting payments for most Nigerians. With the growing pace of digitalization globally, it is essential that we leverage digital channels in fulfilling this objective. It is in this vein that the CBN recently deployed the first central bank digital currency in Africa, the INAIRA, which would help in attaining our goals of fostering growth, greater inclusion using digital channels supporting cross-border payments for businesses and firms, and providing a reliable channel for remittance inflows into Nigeria. The e-Naira will ensure that Nigerians in remote areas can conduct financial services using their digital device at little or no cost. In recognition of the role improved infrastructure could play in the development of our economy, along with the need to leverage private sector capital in funding over 35 trillion Naira deficit, which is the estimated amount required to build an efficient infrastructure system in Nigeria. The CBN, working in partnership with critical stakeholders such as the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority and the AFC, set up the InfraCo. InfraCo is expected to raise over 15 trillion in its first phase to support investment in critical infrastructure in Nigeria. Now, we also do intend to mobilize international capital. A key challenge to supporting the growth in key sectors of our economy is access to large pools of cheap investment capital. Today, over $100 trillion is held by institutional investors in OECD countries, most of it invested in low yielding assets relative to high yielding opportunities in Nigeria. And working to tap into this pool of funds will require the setup of an investment framework that offers comfort and security to investors seeking to invest in critical sectors of our economy. As a result, the CBN is working to set up the International Financial Center at Eco Atlantic City in Lagos, 
that will serve as a hub for attracting domestic and external capital which is needed to strengthen our post-COVID economy. Our International Financial Center, when fully operational in the second quarter of 2022, will help to position Nigeria as a key destination for investment in Africa. Concluding his address, Governor Mefili noted that while Nigeria had been able to contain some of the adverse effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy, there was need for all stakeholders to work towards building a more resilient economy that is better able to contain external shocks, while supporting growth and wealth creation in key sectors of the economy. He urged Nigerians to eschew the culture of import dependence and that stakeholders in the private sector should collaborate with the government in supporting the growth of sectors such as manufacturing, information and communication technology, ICT, and infrastructure, which is said will strengthen Nigeria's ability to deal with the challenges of COVID-19 and stimulate further growth of the economy. As it is customary at the CIBN annual Bankers Dinner event, awards were presented to deserving individuals and organizations for their stellar performances in their respective fields. The awards presented were in five categories. They are the X Factor Award, Affiliate of the Year Award, Next Generation Customer Award, the COVID-19 Response Banker of the Year Award, and the Next Generation Class of 2021 Award. The X Factor Award, which is for the staff adjudged to be the leading female banker of the year, was backed by Olaronke King of Standard Chartered Bank PLC. The award was presented by Mrs. Aisha Ahmed, Deputy Governor of Financial System Stability, Central Bank of Nigeria. Paystack Payments Limited, a payment system and financial technology company won the Affiliate of the Year Award, which is awarded to an organization which performance is adjudged to have enhanced the industry's role of financial inclusion. The award was received on behalf of the company by former Deputy Governor of Lagos State, Femi Pedro. The Next Generation Customer Award, an award category which recognizes a business in an identified strategic sector that has been catalyzed by the banking industry's support. This category was won by Faith Agro Limited, and the award was presented by Governor of Niger State, Abubakar Sandy Bello. Two winners emerged for the COVID-19 Response Banker of the Year Award category. The award category recognizes employees who innovatively stepped up beyond the call of duty in the fight against COVID-19 to ensure that business continued despite the scourge of the pandemic. The award was won by the duo of Amechi Ukobi of Access Bank PLC and Dr. Shagun Owan of First Bank of Nigeria PLC. Each winner was presented with the award by Lagos State Governor Babajide Songolu. Dr. Wan's award was received on his behalf by a proxy. The Next Generation Class of 2021 award was the last to be presented. The award category recognizes a class of young bankers who are excelling and have contributed exceptionally to the industry and the economy with their institution. The awardees are nominated by their institutions and they are regarded as the future of the banking industry. Winners in this category were presented with their awards by the CBN Governor Godwin Emefeli. You're welcome back. The 56th edition of the annual Bankers' Dinner certainly lived up to expectations. But amidst the glitz and glamour and the clinking of glasses at the event, stakeholders were still extensively intimated with the defining events that took place in the financial sector 
and indeed the Nigerian economy from the outbreak of COVID-19 up until the tail end of 2021. Each address had the expected depth and enlightened the guest, as well as members of the public who had watched the event broadcast live on some television stations on how the banking industry collaborated with the government to combat not only COVID-19 itself, but also the debilitating impact of the disease on the Nigerian economy. As you saw, the banking industry discharged itself creditably in that task. The CBN governor also rendered a thorough account of his stewardship as the number one banker in the country in the period under review. And to those actors in the Nigerian economy who had looked forward to the event to chart their calls for the year 2022, the CBN governor did not disappoint them as he provided detailed information on the outlook for the Nigerian economy next year. On that note, we draw the curtain on today's edition of the program. Of course, I'll be back with you again next week on same day and same time on this station when we bring you another edition of the program. Until then, it's goodbye for now.